Creativity by John Steptoe. Illustrations by E. B. Lewis. To the children of Penwood Elementary, E. B. L. I was sitting in class one day when this dude walks in. He went over to Mr. Cohen's desk. Mr. Cohen's all right. He's my teacher. Mr. Cohen stood up and said the new kid was named Hector. Hector's whole name was one of them long numbers. I'd get out of breath just trying to say it. Hector's family just moved here, Mr. Cohen said. He'll be in our class. His two sisters will be going to school here too. I hope we will all look out for Hector until he learns the ropes. Then Hector said something to Mr. Cohen, and Mr. Cohen said something back. What language you talking, Mr. Cohen? I asked. Spanish, Charles. Hector's from Puerto Rico, Mr. Cohen told me. I didn't get it. How could that guy be from Puerto Rico? He was the same color as me, and I'm not from Puerto Rico. His hair was black like mine, but it was straight. At the end of the day, Mr. Cohen asked us, "Does anybody live near 66 Virgin Street?" Hector and his sisters might need someone to make sure they don't get lost on the way home. I raised my hand. "I'll walk 'em," I said. "I live right down the corner from there." I went up to the front of the room, and Mr. Cohen said, "Hector, this is Charles. He's going to walk home with you, okay?" Hector nodded and said, "Okay." Mr. Cohen, he can talk English, I said. Hector, you go ahead and meet the girls," Mr. Cohen said. "Charles, we'll we'll be right down." After Hector left, I said, "He ain't really Spanish, is he?" Mr. Cohen laughed and said, "Hector isn't Spanish, but he speaks Spanish. People in the United States speak English, even though we're not all English. How come he's the same color I am? Don't that mean his people was from Africa like mine?" Charlie, the reason Hector looks so much like you is his ancestry is similar to yours. You mean Hector's people was Africans too? Yes, I remember that Hector's hair was straight. Africans and what else? Africans and Spaniards from Spain and the Indians who originally lived in the island of Puerto Rico. They have Indians there. That's right. Maybe tomorrow we can look at some maps and get into it a little bit more. But right now, you should go downstairs and meet Hector and his sisters. Hector was waiting with two girls. He told me the little one was Elsie and the bigger one was Rosita. What's happening, sisters? I said. They both said Buenos dias. We started walking. Them girls was talking a mile a minute in Spanish. Boy, I didn't know how they could even understand themselves. Hector and I walked behind them. Hector started telling me about his home in Puerto Rico. It wasn't easy to understand him at first, but I listened real hard. Hector's a nice dude, I thought. When I got home, I was telling my mother about Hector. I didn't know there were Puerto Ricans that looked just like us. I said, "Yes, they come from pretty much the same type of people we come from." Said Mama, "Your father has some Cuban blood in him, and Cuba isn't far from Puerto Rico." Yeah, I never knew I was part Cuban. You know, Hector was telling me that his father was a fisherman in Puerto Rico. He used to help his father go fishing sometimes. I didn't know people did things like that anymore. I thought they had machines to catch fish. Mama was smiling. Hector says they used to live on a beach with palm trees and coconut trees and stuff. Shoot, I wish I lived on a beach so I could go swimming every day. <laughs> you better learn how to swim first, Mama said. Hector says he can swim real good. Maybe he could teach me. Maybe said Mama. Later, when we was having dinner, I was telling my father about Hector and swimming lessons. I was thinking I could trade teaching him how to speak good English. I said. <laughs> Mama laughed. And who's gonna teach you? Daddy smiled and said, "Charlie's just being creative with his language, right, Charles?" <laughs> Mama and Daddy laughed. I laughed too, but I didn't know what we was laughing at. What's creative, Daddy? That's like when a musician takes a song and does something different with it, different from what anybody else does, or when three painters sit in front of the same bowl of fruit and come up with three different pictures. Each of them has something different to say about that bowl of fruit, so each paints it in a different way.
Understand? Sort of. Daddy thought for a minute. Most of the people you know speak English, and you speak English, right? Yeah. Well, you speak it differently than anybody else. People can still understand you, but you're almost speaking a whole other language. You take the basic language and use it to express yourself the way you want to, saying what you mean in your own special way. That's being creative. That's cool. I said. I liked knowing there was a nice word for doing things my own way. Hector had told me that they don't speak Spanish in Puerto Rico the same way they speak it in Spain. I guess Puerto Ricans are being creative too. The next day in school, Mr. Cohen showed us Puerto Rico on a map. He was telling us that when Spaniards came there, they brought Africans as slaves to do the hard work. The way the English made slaves out of the people that I probably come from and brought them to the United States. And then about how Spanish people who came to the islands and the Africans and the Indians that already lived there and some Chinese people had all mixed together to make Puerto Ricans, just like here when some of the Africans mixed with some of the white people and I guess some Indians too. I guess if everybody don't kill each other, everybody will get all mixed up together. I said that would be weird. Not weird when you think about it, Mr. Cohen said. Everybody in this room is the result of different people mixing up together. Our next class was gym. Me and Hector was talking while we was changing into our gym clothes. Then Hector pulled out these brand new sneakers. In this neighborhood, you have to have the right sneakers, lest you want to get laughed at. I didn't want to hurt Hector's feelings, so I didn't say nothing about them banana floats he was carrying around on his feet. When we got onto the gym floor, all the fellas was doing a lot of laughing and cracking on Hector's sneakers. Hey, Hector, where'd you get them skips? Charlie, you should refer your boy to a better store. Hector got mad. What's the big joke? He asked me. Ah,、uh, they're just acting stupid. I said, 'cause you dress different. What do you mean? Well, your sneakers and that shirt. He looked down at the palm tree shirt. My grandmother gave me this shirt. He said, "I really like it. It reminds me of my home." And what's wrong with my sneakers? Well, people around here are really into sneakers, and nobody wears that kind. My mother just bought them for me," said Hector. "They're brand new. She doesn't have money to buy me another pair." Don't worry about it," I said. "You're still my boy, even if you do dress weird." When I got home, I checked my closet. My mother came into the room while I was looking. Charlie, what you doing? I'm looking for my other sneakers. You've got sneakers on your feet. How many pairs can you wear? They're not for me. They for Hector. I explained. He didn't know the right kind to buy, and his mother can't get him no more because she already bought him some. And I can't have none of my friends walking around looking funny if they're gonna hang out with me. Well, I guess they're your sneaker, Mama said. The next day was Saturday. I took the sneakers and went over to Hector's house. Rosita answered the door. "Buenos dias," I said. She showed me where Hector's room was, doing a lot of giggling. I went in. "What's happening, my man?" "Hey, Charlie!" Hector jumped up. "How do you feel? Who opened the door for you?" "Rosita." "I think my sister likes you." Hector was grinning. "Yeah, yeah. She's always talking about you." "What you got there in that box?" "I got a pair of sneakers for you." Good ones for me. He took the box and opened it. Oh, nice! They cost a lot of money. No big thing. Put them on. Hector sat down and started putting them on. I figured you wore the same size as me. I told him. Yes, they fit good. He stood up and bounced a little. Let's go play some ball. I said. Try them out. Okay, Hector said. Then he said, "Wait a minute." He went to his closet and pulled something out and handed it to me. Here, it was his palm tree shirt. You're gonna give me your shirt? You don't have to do that. I said, "It's a good exchange." Hector said. I put on the shirt and looked myself in the mirror. It looked great, and suddenly I knew exactly what to say. Your gift to me is very creative, Hector. I said. I like it. Then we went out to play ball.